Hello and welcome to the Wedding Dish Podcast. Grab your fork and knife and take a seat at our table as we dish on all things weddings. You'll hear stories and tips from real couples and wedding pros about love, life, and entrepreneurship. I am Sarah Alpin. I'm the hostess with the mostest on the Wedding Dish Podcast and the CEO of Photos from the Hardy and District Bliss. And uh, before we get started, if you haven't listened to last week's episode, make sure you check it out. We talked about how you can make courthouse weddings not in any way, shape, or form boring, and also about a super cute proposal and vow renewal. So check that one out. Thank you, everyone, for tuning into The Wedding Dish today. We are talking with an established figure in the wedding industry. Um, (laughs) After starting her career as a wedding photographer about a decade ago, her work has been featured in innumerable prestigious publications. She's now the owner of San Diego's top-rated wedding dress boutique, and she's made a name for herself through her YouTube channel, which provides tons of helpful advice about your special day. And today's guest is also an author. She wrote the beautiful book, A Bride's Guide to the Perfect Wedding, which is a must-read for anyone who's looking uh, to make the most out of their wedding photography. Today, we are dishing with the human behind the white flower and Kevin Elizabeth. Kevin Elizabeth, thank you so much for joining <laughs> me on The Wedding Dish today. Thanks for having me. Super excited to be here. (laughs) I am really excited to dish with you. I love talking about wedding dress appointments um, because they just can be so different from what you expect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I am really excited to get your insight and advice. Yes. Well, I have seen hundreds of wedding dress appointments (laughs) by this point. And it's really interesting because, you know, as a wedding photographer, I had seen hundreds of full wedding days with the whole family, all the guests, and, you know, really, you know, you spend one-on-one with the couple the whole day. And then, I've transitioned to seeing the bride and her group that she brings with her for 90 minutes in like the fitting room. And so it's a whole different dynamic, different set of emotions. And it's just been a really interesting journey. I've learned a whole lot and I have a lot to share. (laughs) I am so excited. Well, let's get into it. What are the some of the most important things to consider surrounding a dress appointment? Mm -hmm. I think one thing that's really important to consider is that you are more capable of making decisions than you think you are. Yes. Yes. (laughs) You have more power in you and more confidence in you than you really think you have because so many times a bride will come in and she'll say, I'm indecisive. I'm indecisive. I can't make decisions. There's no way I can make a decision today. And I see her on our little platform pedestal and she makes like dozens of decisions in 90 minutes. She decides that she doesn't like square neck. She decides she doesn't like a fitted dress. She decides that she doesn't like poof. She doesn't like um, a color underlay. She likes ivory instead. She makes so many decisions left and right. And yeah, after all those decisions, I think you can say yes to a dress. Like I really think you have it in you. So yes, you actually are not as indecisive as you think you are. That is such, (laughs) that's, I've never heard anyone say that and it's so accurate. And I think that's one of the reasons that people bring like this entourage Mm -hmm. of humans with them. Yeah. You don't always need them all. (laughs) Well, I would love to hear some suggestions you have for setting boundaries around the Mm -hmm. group you bring with you, especially surrounding feedback in light of the fact that you're more decisive than you think. Yes, absolutely. Um, So, you know, we can certainly talk about boundaries on who to bring with you and then boundaries once you've established who you're bringing with you. Boundaries on the kind of feedback they give. Everybody likes different kinds of feedback. Um, So first they can talk about boundaries on who to bring with you. Um, I think we see say yes to the dress and there's groups that bring 15 people. Um, At my bridal boutique, we kind of limit how many people you can bring mainly because of a space issue. We're a small private boutique and we have small intimate um, private spaces and where you're not on display in front of other people, which is great. Oh, Um, I love that. No one else can see you in the store. And so uh, for that reason, you can really only bring four people to our boutique. And so you kind of really have to choose who you're going to bring. You have to be a little bit more selective, which is really great for you um, because 
because then you're not like, oh, I got to bring all these cousins. Now you don't have to. You can blame it on the boutique, which is great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so it's it's more intimate when you bring less people. It's more people you have to listen to because you really don't need all those opinions. Again, you have it within yourself um, because people get up there and you can really look in the mirror and you can really think to yourself, do I like this on me or do I not like this on me? But circling back to who to bring with you, I think when you think about who you want in that room with you, think about who's going to make that experience a good experience for you. If you have to think about, well, I have to bring mom because mom has always said that she has to be there when I have my dress. But if mom doesn't make shopping enjoyable for you in general, if mom always points out that your stomach is pudgy, um, and I'm saying this because I have heard mom say this in appointments and it's Oof. awful. Um, or if you feel like you have to bring your sister because she's your sister, even though you don't really like your sister that much and your sister is not that close to you, or maybe your sister doesn't make you feel confident about your body. That's a red flag that maybe you should not bring your sister. So setting up boundaries around who to bring with your appointment is something that you are allowed to do. Um, you don't have to bring those people. Getting to come to a bridal appointment is a privilege, not a right. Um, and I know it can be tricky when, say, mom is maybe paying for the dress. Um, if mom is paying for the dress, but mom might make your shopping experience really terrible, then my advice to you would be find another way to pay for the dress. It will be a thousand times better if you can disconnect yourself financially from your mother, at least just for your dress, and not have her come to that appointment. Because I have been in too many appointments where there has just been a horrible mother and the daughter just feels terrible about herself. And I've almost just wanted to pull the bride aside and say, do you want to come back by yourself on another time? And I've oh, had to say that once or twice. But it also, it's like, you know, in those situations, I'm scared to do that because what if the daughter turns on me? So yeah. what do you mean? So it's a really fine line for me as the stylist because I want to stand up for these brides and be supportive of them without getting my head chewed off by the mother who then is being mean to me oftentimes as well. So anyways, set those boundaries. If you think that person is not going to give you a good experience, perhaps don't bring them. Um, and then when you have your group of people and you're setting boundaries about the feedback, it's totally okay before you go to your appointment to say, hey guys, here's kind of what I would like for you from this experience today. Um, there are people who really love people to be very, very honest. However, I have had people be very honest, but in a constantly negative way. I'll hear the curtain open. Maybe I won't be in the appointment. I'll hear, I hate it. I hate that dress so much without waiting to hear if perhaps the bride likes it. So maybe we want to wait until the bride talks first before we share our opinion from the sofa. I think that it's really good for the bride to share what she thinks first. Um, and if you are the bride listening and you agree with me, then maybe let's share that feedback with our group. Say, hey, I would love to share my opinion first and then you guys can speak. And maybe if you know that I love it, but you don't love it, let's find a way to kind of tailor first. Um, and if we don't like it, but we want to be honest, let's find a not horribly negative way to share our feedback because the brain does not respond well to constant negativity. So if we can frame our um, feedback that is negative in a better way, rather than coming out with very hateful language constantly, that's good. So I think setting up those boundaries beforehand is a really good way to make sure that your experience as the bride or however you identify going dress shopping is going to set you up for a more enjoyable experience. That's such a good suggestion, not only because it makes your appointment better as the person trying dresses on, but also a lot of people who go with you don't know how to behave because yes. they don't know what the expectation is. And then sometimes right. that creates some stress and confusion from them. Like mm -hmm. my family didn't know what to do. They were super – they ended up going furniture shopping. I'm not kidding. <laughs> Next door. They left my oh. appointment to go furniture shopping for my brother next door oh. because they didn't know how to give me feedback and they felt uncomfortable and it was giving them anxiety. And that like really hurt my feelings oh. as I'm sure you can imagine. Yeah. Oh. 
So had I set boundaries and let them know what I needed from them, that probably would have alleviated that entire situation, which Mm -hmm. clearly it's been almost 11 years since I got married and I'm still mentioning it. Yeah, yeah. It struck a chord. Yeah. So I think that sets everybody up for having a better time and a Mm -hmm. more positive experience. So that's really good feedback. Yes. And one thing that I would want to be hyper specific on is we will have several groups where they bring a friend, sister, whatever, who got married somewhat recently, like within the last six months, and she will bring up her own wedding constantly throughout the appointment. Mo, my wedding, make sure that your, their appointment does this. Make sure your boutique does this. Make sure my wedding, my dress was like this. Hey, um, I know you hate fitted dresses because you hate the way, but go try on a fitted dress and blah, blah, like constantly. So if you have a friend or sister who just did that and you don't want to hear all about her during your appointment, maybe gently or strongly bring that up before you go because we see that happen a lot and I can sometimes see it wearing on the bride. So I would mention that as well. Yeah, I see that happen sometimes <laughs> at weddings. In yes. A, like when people are getting ready. I'm sure you saw it as a photo- – you've seen it as a photographer too. Yeah, yeah. It's specifically during getting ready and mm. that person will either be saying it to the – like to the someone else in the room being like, well, when I got married, blah, 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 mm-hmm. or, you know – we did this or what, and it's very, you can just see like the ears, like the satellite ears happening. Yes. It's very distracting. It is. And it, it does make me a little sad for the bride sometimes because this is supposed to be like her time, her 90 minutes, her space. And um, like, it's great. Congratulations. I'm glad you had your time in your day, but like you had your bridal appointment, like let her have hers. And also too, like I, we're, we're workers here. We're professionals. Like we're going to take good care of her. Like we, I don't need to hear all about your experience to do my job too. So let us just take care of her. And it's great that you had your time. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah, I I'm feel happy. you I'm so happy hard. You. <laughs> I feel you in my soul. Yeah. <laughs> so how do couples know which stores are the right fit for their attire? Because mm-hmm. there are a lot of different types of boutiques and yes. it's uh, it's hard to really know what the difference is when you've never done this before. Yes, absolutely. So – Research is great. And millennials, Gen Z, we love to research, especially compared to other generations. And research is at our fingertips on Yelp, on the bridal boutiques websites. And so one thing I would encourage um, people looking for wedding dresses to do is take 10, 15 minutes. That could be all that it takes for you to find um, two to three stores. I think that that's really all you need to go to unless you totally strike out of those and then go to more. I think any more than two to three is kind of I would say excessive for like one day, one weekend, Um, again, unless you didn't find anything there. So I would recommend like first things first, going on Google or going on Yelp, finding like a list of maybe five or six of the top rated ones. You want to go to the top rated. So like four stars or above. Don't go below that, please. Don't do it. (laughs) You you (laughs) won't have a good time there, I promise you. And then so once you find those, then what I would encourage you to do is go to their websites or go to their Instagrams and make sure, you want to make sure that the types of dresses that you're seeing on their website are actually the aesthetic that you like. Because I say this, sometimes we will have brides come into our store blindly because they see that we're like the highest rated boutique in town. They come in and they're like, you don't have any boho dresses in here at all. And I'm like, no, I'm, I'm really sorry. We don't. And then they immediately leave. And it's like a whole waste of an appointment block where we could have fit somebody else. And then it wastes a whole a block that they could have booked somewhere else. And if they had just looked at our website, they would have seen so quickly, like within 30 seconds that we don't have any boho dresses. So that's why I encourage um, people looking for dresses to just look at the websites. You can look at the brands like my store, for example, we list every single dress that we carry in our store. We update it daily. And a lot of stores do that. Some stores only put the designers they carry, but you can just click over to some designer websites, see like what they carry. But Instagram is really quick and easy to see what they have. So make sure that you find two to three stores 
top rated and have dresses that fit the vibe that you think that you're going for. Obviously that could change after you start trying on, but as long as they're what you're, you're like looking for, what you're gravitating towards, that'll get you started in such a great place rather than just like randomly showing up at a store. That's a really good thought. And especially mm-hmm. because when it doesn't go well, it's so discouraging. Yes. Um, there are very few things as adults that we are learning for the first time. And mm-hmm. weddings is one of those things because you've never done it. And um, or in most cases, you haven't done it, or you're yes. doing it super differently, or for, you know, it's a, a totally different experience, you know, mm-hmm. either way. Um, and I just kind of I, – I feel like I really want people to like keep that in their heart that you <laughs> you are learning something regardless. Like please do at least a little bit of research so that you don't set yourself up for disappointment, but especially yes. in the very beginning stages of wedding planning, mm-hmm. which is what dress shopping is going to be. Yes. Like just taking a little bit of time on that front end saves you so much time on the back end. And I know I mentioned earlier um, that my boutique has private suites. Some brides or actually maybe even a lot of brides have a lot of anxiety going into dress shopping. And if you are somebody who does not want to be kind of put on display, quote unquote, um, like you might see on Say Yes to the Dress, where you're on the pedestal and all the other groups can see you. If that's a concern of yours, look at the boutique's website and see if they say something about private suites. And that could be something you could look for in a boutique to make sure that you are not on display. That could really help. Yeah, I think so. I I totally agree because I think mm-hmm. I would be uncomfortable standing in front of like a bunch yeah. of other people who are giving unsolicited yes. advice. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like if you don't like shopping at Aritzia, which I did once where they don't have mirrors in their dressing room, you have to go out into like the area with everybody's boyfriends on the couch and like look at the mirrors around everyone else. <laughs> yeah, if you, don't, if you don't like that, then um, you probably want to look for a boutique with private suites. <laughs> That's a really great suggestion. Yeah. I'm going to throw you a curveball question here okay. that I did not prepare you for. Um, mm-hmm. But it's – I think it I'm, – I'm confident that you will have this answer. So sure. a lot of times when you get engaged, a friend or a sibling or parent wants to make an appointment for you to try mm-hmm. on dresses. Yes. Yes. Um, do you have any advice surrounding that yeah. given that you just mentioned like you need to make sure the type of dresses that you want are there? Yeah. Oh, yes, I do. Uh, <laughs> so that can absolutely have some complexities to it. And my store certainly does get a lot of bookings where someone else books for them. And it does make it a little difficult for us. However, my store does a couple of things to circumvent that. But one thing that you absolutely need to tell them is your dress budget. That's very important that they know yeah. that information. It's really good to, if um, I know they know what you look like, but to let them know maybe your dress size, um, especially if you are a bride who is midsize or plus size to make sure that the stores that they're booking you at do carry um, dresses in your size. That is important. Not all stores are inclusive, unfortunately. And then if you perhaps Perhaps just tell them, like, if if you're looking for a colorful wedding dress, make sure that they're looking for stores that have colorful wedding dresses. That could just be something that they might need to know if you're looking for something non-traditional. But the dress dress budget is important because if your dress budget is $1,500, then they need to make sure they're not booking you only appointments where the stores start at $3,000 and up because that yeah. would not be a very fun experience. So those are my points that I would, would have to say right off the bat. Yeah, I think that's a really mm-hmm. good suggestion. I th- I think a lot of people run into that problem or that dynamic. I don't know that I would call it a problem, um, but it can be complicated if it's not the right fit. Mm-hmm. So I love that. Yes. Great answer. Um, definitely wasn't even thinking about the budget. <laughs> yeah, important to know because a lot of times the friend or the whoever doesn't know the budget. And so at my store, at least for the most part, we start at 3000 and up. We're about to get a new line that will have us starting more at 28 and up. But you know, if the friend or whoever doesn't have any idea, then we say, well, you, can you please find out for us just because we want to make sure that we have dresses in her range and that we can, you know, give her great experience. Um, because otherwise, if they just come in without knowing and we don't know until the day and the bride's budget is $1,000, then we won't have anything for her and, and then we'll have to send them, you know, to another store. And 
So it's not a fun experience. So yeah, it's just disappointing and discouraging. Yeah, it is. It is. We try to, you know, be as positive as we can, but it's disappointing for the bride. And then it's like, then it's like the friend did bad. It's just uncomfortable. You know, it's like, oh, sorry. (laughs) I know it's a bad situation for everyone. (laughs) Yeah. And then then the group is like, what do you mean you don't have any dresses for her? And I'm like, I don't know. I'm sorry. (laughs) Yeah. Sorry. That's so sad. That's a yeah. really good idea. Um, okay. So do you have any other tips that you would like to share with couples who are thinking about their wedding attire um, or any final advice you would like to share? Yes, absolutely. The dress does not have to match the venue. It just doesn't. It needs to match you, but the wedding, bridal, whatever you want to call it, version of you. It can be you, but amped up more extra for the day, but it does not have to match the venue. doesn't have to match the theme. Those things don't have to matter. People get really hung up on that. It doesn't matter. Um, you as a photographer, you know that a lot of our wedding photos are not wide landscape shots with a venue in the background. They just aren't. A lot of them are more cropped in of the person. So you're not really matching your venue for most of the day. Yeah, that's so true. Even if you had like a dress that was like covered from head to toe in crystals and you did like an adventure elopement, it would still be absolutely beautiful because you would feel confident and comfortable and wonderful in it. So it would just be different from what other people have done and that's fine. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's important. The only thing that really matters when it comes to the dress and the venue is If your venue is going to be decided between like it's up in the air and maybe you can either book it for a day really, really soon or far away. And because of the date, that means you're going to have to like pay rush for the dress or not. That's the only thing that really matters around the venue and the dress in my mind. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you have to obviously have the time to get the dress shipped in and potentially alterations too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That makes total sense. I like that. Yeah. (laughs) Very smart. This is why you're the expert. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Just, you know, like when you find a dress, you love everything about it. It makes you feel confident. makes you feel beautiful or handsome or whatever word you want to describe that makes you just feel like, ah, like this is great. Like I love the way I look. That can be your dress. You don't need to complicate it. There's always going to be a million other dresses out there. You're always going to see another dress on Instagram that you're like, whoa, that's amazing. What if? Who cares? You found one that you love. That's it. That's a great one. Well, what a way to take it home. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Well, thank you so much for joining me today, Kevin. How can people find you online? So um, my YouTube is just youtube.com slash Kevin Elizabeth. And then for the Bridal Boutique in San Diego, we're right on Balboa Park, like 10 minutes from the airport. If anybody wants to fly in and see us, if you're not in San Diego. <laughs> um, and that is on Instagram at the white flower. And on TikTok, we are at the white flower bridal and we are the white flower.com. And then my book is on Amazon, a uh, bride's guide to a picture perfect wedding. And that's it. Perfect. Awesome. So we will link out to everything in the show notes and the description of this episode in case you missed something. Um, So make sure you grab that. And Kevin, thank you so much for joining me today. This was such a fun episode. So many things I hadn't thought about (laughs) and just such great advice for everyone who's looking for a dress. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. And while you are finding Kevin and the White Flower on Instagram, you can find us at The Wedding Dish Podcast, and you'll be able to grab show notes and links and see amazing work that and and beautiful pictures of the dresses that they have. Um, You can find those on theweddingdishpodcast.com, and you'll see our show notes. And um, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review or follow, rate, and review. And until next time, we'll see you later. Bye. Bye.